music is emotion. When I'm at my most fragile state, that's the best time to sit at the piano because that's usually when some of the best stuff comes out. There are nuances that you can capture and convey with music that you can't in conversation. It's also universal and very intuitive, so I think you can connect with somebody on a more deep level than you can necessarily with a conversation. For instance, with the song Far Too Soon on the record, that was the day that I heard that Cole passed away. And I've, this is the only time I've ever written a song like this. But I literally sat at the piano and played the song through from start to finish in one take. And I wasn't thinking about, you know, oh now I'm accepting. It was just, that's just what came out that particular day. Connor's always loved music from a young age, and by the time of his injury, he was in jazz band and concert band at school, he was in rock band, and I think it was always inside of him from a young age that music was where he was headed. It was uh, three days after my 15th birthday. Uh, I went into the hospital for routine day surgery to repair a deviated septum in my nose. Well, Connor went in for a routine septoplasty operation. There was a complication and he had a brain hemorrhage. He was in a coma. He was in intensive care and first few days were very, very, very worrisome for my wife and I. And I ended up spending a month in the hospital. I was in a coma for a week and the whole right side of my body was paralyzed. So I had to relearn how to walk, how to eat, how to tie my shoes, how to hand write, all these basic things again. Um, I know, I've heard it through Connor, I've heard it through Cole. Uh, I know when Connor had his um, issue with his uh, surgery, that when he went to Vincent Massey, he didn't, ha didn't have any friends there. And Cole, uh, being who he was, he kind of took him under his wing and helped him get, get you know, meet people and help, help, help him make feel comfortable. Four months after my, my brain injury, I went to Vincent Massey Collegiate, uh, which is a school with about 1,300 people there and I didn't know anybody. But the first day uh, of school, I was in grade 10, and a guy came up to me, and his name was Cole, and he introduced himself, he was in grade 12, and he says, hey, I recognize you from the, the jazz camp. Welcome to Massey. He was the friend that Connor really needed then. Well, he was an angel to Connor, because I think without him there, Connor may have who knows, maybe even gotten out of music. He just, he needed somebody there to support him and say, you know, this is the place where you gotta be and I'm gonna help you get where you wanna go. And then the next day, uh, my band teacher pulled me into his office and says, I've decided to put you in the senior jazz band, which is the grade 12 big band. So then I'm playing piano and Cole's playing drums and we're in the same band together. So we really bonded and we stayed in the same room on band trips and just really got to know each other well. Um, and even though we only went to school with each other for one year, we remained, you know, best of friends till the end. Yeah, Cole was a very special person to me. Um, we met in my first year of university. I remember going to one of the jazz nights at the university's pub that they had and hearing him play the drums. I was immediately struck by just how groovy and kind of fresh his style was, playing these standards I'd heard a million times, like, oh wow, he, this person has a very cool way of doing that. Um, and then later on, his laugh just moved through the room and I was struck again and I was like, oh, I have to get to know this person and he moved out to Vancouver with his girlfriend Cordelia and they lived out there for a few years and then he ended up moving back home um, due to some health complications. Um, well he had diabetes, uh, type 1 diabetes since he was uh, four years old. 
Um, and of course, it's a you know the daily management of it is quite important. Like he takes insulin every day, he took insulin every day, he took his needles. Um, he you know it, it's something you always have to monitor. Um, so he, that's something he always had to live with. I think he would have come home even if he wasn't feeling great. But when he came home, um, you know he wasn't well for quite a while. We got him kind of back on track, um, but we didn't know he had a, a heart problem we didn't know about, and that's what that's what he died from. I was at work. Um, his sister asked me to call her, and so she told me about what had happened that morning. He had passed away, and I think for a moment everything stopped. I woke up at eight in the morning and came down the stairs. And when I came down the stairs, my parents were standing in the front entrance. And my dad says, Connor, I just got a phone call from Alan, who's Cole's dad. He said, uh, Cole passed away yesterday. And I just reacted. I can't, I don't know how to describe it, but I just, was somewhere else. Like the whole world just stopped for a second and I was just, I was devastated, you know. I didn't know that, well no one knew that he had a undiagnosed heart condition and so just hearing that news it was just, it just came out of left field, I had no idea. We kind of had like a group message on Facebook um, just with me, Cordelia, and our friend Lauren and a few other close friends of Cole's and we were kind of like organizing the funeral and uh, Cordelia said I really want to sing like an Amy Winehouse song. I said I'll accompany you. She says great. So, so at the funeral I played my song for Cole and then right after she came up and we played an Amy Winehouse song the next day we went for lunch and I, I said to her I said you know I I forgot how incredible of a voice you have. Would you be interested in writing some lyrics to some of my songs? She says, yeah, send, send something to me. I, it, it, for me, it was a really interesting process because I hadn't before this point really considered myself a writer by any means. Um, and I think this process, the way we did it, really introduced me to kind of a, an approach that made sense for me that I really arrived with. As well at the funeral, um, Cole's dad came up to me after I wrote, after I played the song and he says, I, I, I couldn't help but hear words when you were playing your song. Do you mind if I write lyrics? Um, when I actually went down to do it, it was obviously very difficult. Um, I did a number of drafts. I put it down. I set it aside for a week or two. It took me months to do it. Um, every time I would write a lyric, it, I just couldn't express what I want to express. But cry just a memory far too soon. That smile. Yeah, it was it was difficult, but I wanted to be part of it, and I wanted you know um, I'm, I'm honored that Connor asked me to do it and asked me to sing on one of the songs, and that's when it kind of clicked, and I thought. You know, I should do an album and dedicate it to Cole because I think that's that's the best way I can tribute his life um, is to do an album for him. So that's how that all came about. Connor and and his mom and dad came to talk to me about about helping him with this project, and and even though I didn't know Cole, I have to make sure Connor is putting out what he wants to put out in terms of his relationship and his life and how he's affected by that. That's just me trying to do my job in, in terms of being a supportive producer, engineer, arranger, a friend.
even though not everyone that listens to the music is going to have had a close relationship with Cole or even knew Cole at all, it's really for anybody accepting that they lost somebody. I don't think you need the backstory to be able to appreciate the message behind a lot of these pieces. I think it's something that people can relate with themselves. We've all been through some traumatic times, especially through the last few years. Um, I think if somebody can listen to these songs and hear the messages that I've written, uh, maybe it'll help them to make sense of something or find the vocabulary for themselves that will make things just a little bit easier. Just a bit. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.